Welcome to Electro Online. Our next example is an example of a cable with a distributed load. Now here what we're saying is that there's the load on the cable is a certain value, in this case 100 pounds for every foot of cable. Now this could have been caused simply by the weight of the cable or because we're attaching something on the cable that is distributed evenly over the entire cable. Now we said earlier in an earlier video that if we're working with a cable where the weight of the cable itself is causing the sag in the cable, then we have a situation where we have a catenary and then we have to solve it differently. However, if we pull the cable tight enough so that the sag is very small relative to the length of the cable, in this case the sag is 5 feet relative to a 100 foot section of the cable, you can approximate the solution to this as if the cable has what we call a a parabolic shape and then we can solve it as if there's a distributed load rather than just a catenary where we have just simply the weight of the cable itself but then usually we do that when we have a much greater sag to the cable. The reason for that is if the sag is very small then even though the cable starts to edge upward here, the angle is so small that the hypotenuse of a section of cable versus the horizontal is just slightly bigger than, than the horizontal and therefore we can go ahead and say well we'll just ignore the fact that normally we solve this as a catenary and we'll just use it as a what we call distributed load situation with the, the cable approximates the shape of a parabola. Then what we do is we have a situation like this. If we now take the section of cable from the midpoint at the lowest sag point to the support B, we redrew that section of cable right here. And then we have three forces that can be determined here. The first force is the total force on the cable pushing down. This would be the total load on this section of the cable. And we calculate that by taking the weight per unit length and multiplying it times the horizontal length. Again, the reason why we can do that is that because the horizontal length is much, much greater than the vertical sag distance. In this case, this would be 5 feet versus 50 feet. The second thing we want to calculate is the T sub naught. That would be the horizontal tension component all the way along the cable. So at any section of the cable, you're always going to have a horizontal tension and a vertical tension, the two components making up the tension. And to find the horizontal component, we calculate that at the lowest sag point. We call that T sub naught. And then finally, we'll want to calculate the tension at the very end of, this, of the cable here, where it's attached to the support at B. So we're going to try and draw this triangle. Notice that the angle theta here is the angle of the direction of the tension at the end of the cable relative to the horizontal. And again, we can only do it as a distributed load if that angle is relatively small. The first thing we're going to do is calculate the total force pulling down on the cable due to the load. So in this case that would be the weight, the total weight or the total force pulling on the cable is equal to the weight per unit length times the length. In this case that would be 100 pounds divided by 100 pounds per foot and then we multiply that times the total length of the section of 50 feet which means we have a load of 5,000 pounds. Next, we want to calculate the T sub naught, the horizontal component of the detention in the cable. And the tricky part of that is we can actually do that using the sum of the moments about point B being equal to zero. In other words, we're going to have a rotational point right here and we're going to calculate all the moments about point B right there. And when we sum them up, we know it has to be zero, and that allows us to find T sub naught. So here we'll write the sum of all the moments about point B must equal to zero. First of all, we have the total load, and it's going to act exactly in the middle of the cable. Again, that's an approximation because of the sag here. That's not exactly true, but if the sag is very small, we can just say we'll approximate it as such. And therefore, we assume that the weight or the load on the cable is going to act at the exact halfway point. So therefore, we can say that the load on the cable is going to cause a counterclockwise moment. That means that that's a positive moment, so the force is a W. And we we'll multiply the times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point or the rotational point, which is 25 feet. 
Then we subtract minus t sub naught because that causes a clockwise moment. Minus t sub naught times the sag distance, and in this case the sag distance is going to be 5 feet. That's this distance right here. So we have t sub naught times 5 feet. That will allow us to find t sub naught. Moving to the other side, we have t sub naught times 5 equals w times 25. w represents the load. So t sub naught equals the load times 25 divided by 5, which in this case, we got the load of 5,000 pounds. And multiply times 25 feet divided by 5 feet. And you can see that's 5 times 5,000, or t sub naught is equal to 25,000 pounds. So now we have T sub naught. Here we have the total load, and that allows us now to find the tension at the very end of the cable at the attach point B. Because there we can see that this makes a nice triangle, a right triangle, and we can then say that T squared equals T sub naught squared plus W squared, or t is equal to the square root of t sub naught squared plus w squared. Now simply plug in the values of what they are. We have those right here. So this is equal to the square root of 25,000. Oops, that's not quite a 5 here. 25,000 pounds squared plus, and that would be 5,000 pounds, and we have to square that. And now we need a calculator. 25. 1,000 squared plus 5,000 squared, take the square root, and we get, well, close enough to 25,500 pounds. So T equals 25,500 pounds. And now we have all the major parameters of a hanging cable that has a distributed load. We know the tension in the horizontal direction, which is T sub naught. We know the weight or the load on half of the cable from the, the, the greatest sag point to the point B, and we have the tension at the very end, which can be determined using Pythagorean theorem. In part two, we'll go ahead and attack a few more parts of what we're looking for in the cable, but at least this gives you a very good inroad of how to deal with cables that have distributed loads, and that's how it's done.